الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful the master of the earths and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal. And the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashhadu anna Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh. Wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah I remind myself and remind you to be pious to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything that you do to heed the calling of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, Azza wa Jal, Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighadin wa attaqu allaha, inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun. Oh, you believe, be God conscious. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and die in no way except in the way of Islam. Oh, you believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill taqwa in our hearts and to keep our feet steadfast on his path. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many places in the Quran tells us, orders us, specifies the reason for why we are on this earth. What is it that we are doing? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have created the man and jinn for the sole purpose of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we understand ibadah to include everything that we do. For many, that's still broad. In terms of practice, how do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true worship that He orders us to do? When we read Surah Al-Hadid, a verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies a definition to what is it that people do unto this earth. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط. الله سبحانه وتعالى says we have sent our messengers with the clear signs and we have brought with them the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the balance of justice so that people can stand for, defend, implement, live by. That which is justice. One of the things we see in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recurring. As a way for us to understand not only as a mission to embrace. But also as a way for us to weigh things around us. And to understand how do we put value on something. Or figure out how we can deal with something. And in the face of the challenges and the problems that we're challenged in whether as a minority in this country or as a Muslims carriers of a divine guidance across the world, it is very important for us to be anchored in an understanding of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that enables us not only to understand the events around us, but also to be able to change and affect and bring about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many places in the Quran talks about 
justice and Allah and Allah ya'muru bil 'adli wal ihsan wa ita'id al qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkarun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls to the way of justice and to the way of ihsan and tells you to stay away from the misdeeds and so on and so forth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in so many places in Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha wa idha hakamtum bayna an-nas an tahkumu bil-'adl when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says an-nas he's talking about engaging everybody else liyaquma an-nas bil-qist that this is an ordained mission for everybody but then the scholars also say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many places in the Quran specifically ties subhanahu wa ta'ala that greater meaning of justice to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the understanding of this deen and then becomes the mission that needs to be implemented not just the subscription to the concept as a whole because that is a principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he calls himself subhanahu wa ta'ala al-adl al-muqsit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of justice but this justice must have people that carry it must have people that defend it must have people who will live by it irrespective of their own interest or irrespective of their own well-being that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many other verses in the Quran when he speaks about the believers those who will carry the mission Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu qawwamin bil qisti shuhada lillah oh you believe stand for the cause of justice and be witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he gives you the challenge walaw ala anfusikum aw alwalidayni wal aqrabin even if it's against you against your interest the interest of your parents or those who are close to you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place gives you yet another instruction on how justice is to be implemented ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kunu qawwamin lillah shuhada bil qist ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى. Another reminder: stand for the cause of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Be witnesses for justice, but don't let the ills or the anger or the animosity you have towards others make you sway away from the balance of justice. والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيم الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسر الميزان. This is the balance upon which, that's why the scholar said that there is two spheres for the concept of justice. And our grasp of it and understanding where do we stand with this will help us understand and deal with the other challenges we face. First they say, the open sphere. Adlun mutlaq, which is the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the earth and the heavens upon. That they are so that people, Allah has had to send the book and the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the balance, so that we stand with justice all over. But then there is the one that is tied to the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought so that we must enlist ourselves as the defenders of justice and spread the word. Then we are looking for those not only who use justice as a, a balance to weigh everything around them in relation to their fellow human beings, but we are looking also for those who understand what the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says vis-a-vis -vis justice and be able to be the agents that will, are willing to advocate, stand for, defend and be able to implement it regardless of the restrictions that come from the weakness and the deficiencies of the human condition. And only under the guise, under the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you can combine both because you are believing in it because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you're implementing it because it's your way to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that puts a necessary and an extra responsibility upon us my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he tells us about وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءً عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا That we have made you a justly balanced ummah. The balance of justice is the essence of this ummah. Why? So that you can stand with justice and be witness upon mankind. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is already a witness upon you. 
And so when we look at how do we measure things with the measure of justice, and how do we learn from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to manage ourselves and to navigate through the challenges that face us. Because my dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the concept of our deen, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has sent the book and the balance for us to stand for justice, it means that it is not good enough for us to just say, I worship. It's not good for, good, good for us or good enough for us to say that I believe. But you must act and you must show and you must engage and you must delve yourself into the challenges around you. And so when we look at what happens around us and when we look at how we can understand our deen in a broad sense that allows us to be like the Prophet wasallam told the believers, لا يكوننا أو لا تكونوا إمعا Do not be somebody who is weak and standing by. إذا أحسن تقولون إذا أحسن الناس أحسننا وإذا ظلموا ظلمنا ولكن وطنوا أنفسكم إن أحسن الناس أن تحسنوا وإن أساءوا فلا تظلموا أي اعدلوا You have to heed the calling of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he says be, do not be amongst those who are weak and baseless, who say that if people do right, we will do right. And if people do, do wrong or do injustice, we will do injustice. But rather, anfusakum, establish yourselves on the path of justice, on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kunu qawwamina lillah. Kunu qawwamina bil qist. So that if people make mistake, or make, make good, you be with them and support them. And if they don't, you will not commit injustice and you will stand against the injustice. And so if we look at it, and, and we're challenged, my dear brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, the light of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah has touched the shores of this land. The very land we live in, the very land our children are in, the very land that is the responsibility, the direct responsibility that we have. If we were to embrace that mission, if we were to embrace the responsibility, let us be like the young man who, when asked to summarize the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was able to summarize it in very few words. Those of liberty, justice, and prosperity. When a, a man named Rab'i ibn Amir, he was a sheep herder that was in his early 30s and he was made a leader in one of the battles when he was sent as a messenger to the leader of the Persians, the Kisra, or Rustum. And he was asked, who are you? Where do you come from? What are you coming? What, what, what are you about? He says, Inna Allah abta'athana linukhrija nasa min ibadat al-ibadi ila ibadati rabbi al-ibad. We came to liberate people from the worship of people and the worship of this dunya to the worship of the Lord of this earth and the heavens. Liberty, freedom. We have seen the injustice committed by others in the name of their beliefs. And we're here to establish the justice of Islam, which is from the essence of justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the narrowness of this life to the breadths and avenues of this life and the hereafter. So when we are challenged, my dear brothers and sisters, to look at what our nation is going through, we look at this human experiment we call America that we live in, and we understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that when it started on the foundations of religious liberty and the rights of everybody to come together so that they can live a dignified life, they were subscribing to higher ideals. They were fulfilling these universal principles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a must upon human beings. So we can subscribe to that experiment without a problem. But we can't be accepting of the recurrent faults that this experiment yields all the time. 
because of the deficiency of man without the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of the inability to construct a foundation of principles if it's not based on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's not based on the source of justice subhanahu wa ta'ala and so when we can be critical of the conditions that we may be in, we can be critical of the history of this experiment, we can be critical of the fact that it produced a man to lead us who is many of faults, who has misrepresented the very people we call our own. We have to be able not only to feel frustrated and unable to change, but rather we must broaden our understanding and broaden our concept of how is it can we give ourselves a mandate to understand and to fix and to change the wrong that we see? Because the justice we believe in is a justice inspired by the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The justice we believe in is not limited to books and to manuscripts, but rather it is a responsibility that must be embodied and lived by every one of us. So there's no place for frustration, my dear brothers and sisters. And there's no place for blaming and feeling sorry and, and victimhood. But rather, we must take the higher road. We must understand that the mission of the prophets was always to improve on the condition of the people around them. And to take on the challenge of ensuring that the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lived and is supported. And is in fact the way people interact with one another because without it, people will not be happy. People will not attain the prosperity and the happiness that is promised by anybody. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the promise. The guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given to you so that you shall not live in misery nor will you miss the pathway to the hereafter. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ And those who turn their back to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall suffer a hardship in their life. And so if you are not inspired by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take on the challenge and to recognize the wrong, because when somebody is talking about limiting religious liberty or somebody is talking about excluding a people, from the very foundations of this nation. We belong to this nation just as much as everybody else does. And we are empowered by the very faith that we carry to be able to recognize right from wrong. And to be able to understand the dynamics that controls a human experiment that must be tied to a divine guidance that enlightens the minds and inspire the hearts to make sure that they live as decent human beings, brothers and sisters. And not allow for the faults and the shortcomings of our human experiment to produce the condition we live in today. So when you listen to the State of the Union and you're understanding the demeaning and the undercutting of segments of our society, including us as Muslims. But that's not the only reason why we defend what's right and stand with, against what's wrong. We do it because of that broad meaning of justice I spoke about earlier because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us and ordered everybody else لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ But then after that understanding comes on me then I think to myself and say oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّمِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ Then he tells us to be the ones in the forefront of affecting the cause of justice. And so when we have a president who's trying to ban immigration and bind you, it started by banning Muslims. Because his racism and his bigotry did not only limit itself to one religious group, but rather it went across. He wants to ban the lottery because it adds diversity to this country. He's not even reasonable about people who have been born and raised in this country. The ones we call dreamers. And he shameless, shamefully compares them to everybody else as if their case doesn't matter. We must understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that when we assess something like this, 
None of the fear, none of the frustration should enter our hearts or minds. But rather, it's an inspiration for us to be the ones that inshallah can lead a change that will bring about justice for all. And in doing so, we are honoring not only the legacy of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we're fulfilling the very mission He's asked of us. So it is our path to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ عَلَى مَنَابِرَ مِن نُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallam tells us that those who carry on the cause of justice are the ones who are sitting on members of light. عَلَى يَمِينِ الرَّحْمَانِ وَكُلُّ يَدَيْهِ يَمِينِ Subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the right of the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's so many invocations of what that means. My dear brothers and sisters, that takes a deep understanding of the reality we live in. And of the history of the land we are part of. It is not acceptable, my dear brothers and sisters, to live on the margin. And to accept, to wait for things to happen just because. We don't have the numbers, we don't have the ability, things are overwhelming, so on and so forth. Nonsense. We are responsible to work every moment of our life. To understand and do the best we can. And I'll use the example of the institution of slavery in this nation, my dear brothers and sisters. This evil started in the 1500s. And it represents at least 400 years of the history of this nation. From the day it started. Now we may think that it has no impact on us anymore, but it's not, that's, not wrong. that's not correct. If we want to understand why is there racism and bigotry, if we want to understand the suffrage of our brothers and sisters in the African-American community, if we, we want to understand why does this continue to be institutionalized and built within the construct of our nation, the one we're responsible for, the one that we must figure out ways to fix and move beyond the ills and the wrongs of the current situation, then we must take on that issue. And you should be proud, my dear brothers and sisters. Because if you read the history of slavery, your brothers and sisters in faith were the ones that were brought to this land since the 1500s. And they were the leaders of the liberation movements that resisted this evil from day one. Yes, by the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many of their attempts did not succeed. But you should know that the learned Muslims of West Africa were the leaders of the revolts. The first revolt that took place in the New World, as they call it, was in 1522 in a Caribbean island called Hispaniola, led by Muslims who were brought as slaves. But they weren't just leaders of Muslims. They were the leaders of all of the justice-seeking individuals who were on those lands at that time. And they led the first revolt. And books and history tells us that the language of the revolutionaries at that time was Arabic. So that they can communicate and organize. And yes, it was crushed and they were brutally murdered. But you can see it happen in Mexico in 1522 or 23. In Cuba in 1529. In, in Venezuela and Peru. And Panama in the 16th century. In Guatemala in 1629, in Chile in 1647, in Brazil in 1835, and so on and so forth. In fact, even what people call back the Haitian Revolution was in fact led by believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who resisted this evil because it was against the very foundations of their belief. And so when we engage our society, my dear brothers and sisters, we shouldn't keep a distance, us versus them or or waiting for somebody else to solve the problem. But rather we need to be in the forefront of understanding how best do we undermine and underdo and, and, and undone, undo the very evil that led to these institutions that destroy the fabric of the human family. And in order to sustain that success, in order to sustain the ability to face injustice, we must bring the hearts and the minds to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then and only then will we be true to the verses of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be capable of doing the change that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with, understanding our reality and not fearing the consequences nor fearing the unknown for we know 
the human condition and we know what is its solution. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect us stronger to our faith and to keep us aware and able to live it and live by it and inspire others insha'Allah to learn about it and live by it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم استغفر الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا My dear brothers and sisters this faith we believe in this message of لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله is one that is exemplified in the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us throughout time. And it's applicable to every place and every time we're in. And the challenge we have is for us how to figure out what is the responsibility that is delineated by declaring La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in our own vicinity, in our own reality so that we can fulfill the very responsibilities upon us. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. The life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is with us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَمَّتُ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was completed in two ways. صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا That it's the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. And it is adla because its injunctions, its orders, its ways of life, its implementation is the justice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the orders everybody to do. And so nothing short of embracing it, but also adla, we must be implementing it. We must be judging the world around us through it. And we must be learning how do we fulfill that responsibility of justice that doesn't come with just thinking it or just wanting it but rather by implementing it and living it my dear brothers and sisters and everybody is part of that challenge and everybody is part of that solution i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to take the lead inshallah in transforming our society towards the good that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders and ordains upon us and to make us able inshallah to understand the size of and the magnitude of the responsibility so that we can follow the lead of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in living a life in the fulfillment of that cause. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and guide us. Allahumma afu anna wa gfir lana wa rahamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Wa zakkiha maulaya anta khayru man zakkaha. أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة